Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Rhea. Welcome to Karma's My Bitch, a podcast about love, sex, connection, abundance, joy, purpose, peace, and how life isn't simply the stories we tell ourselves. In your greatest moments, and I mean in your in your highest self in the present when you are in 5D, not only do you have a great deal of physical energy, but everything is possible, as in you can approach whatever comes your way and have and be decisive and have a level of clarity that you didn't have when you were in your karma. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes the differences are a bit more subtle, right? Other times you're like, oh, wow, this is amazing. But what happens is that when you've ma- made that move, right, from your karmic reality to your non-karmic reality, right, to a higher consciousness place, at some point it normalizes, Okay. So life is just life again, right? Yeah. So you don't necessarily, you're not waking up every day and thinking, I'm in 5D now, right? <laughs> like it's all, it's all unicorns and rainbows that normalizes. And because we're still here for our growth and evolution, we might sort of forget we're doing it from a different place. You're like, oh, it's just another day in my life. And also, it's not like you get into 5D and all of a sudden Prince Charming is there standing with a bouquet of roses or the dream job is there standing with like a perfect pen or it's not like all of a sudden you get a reward for being in 5D. You just, life is different. Yeah, no, I mean, we wouldn't think about it in terms of reward. Yeah. But you're effectively your prize is your freedom. Yeah. It's the freedom to make choices that you wouldn't have been a- otherwise able to make when you were in your karma. That's for sure. And But it is our very human tendency to take what seems like a big thing when you're in your karma for granted once you're able to do that. So every little thing becomes the thing that we suddenly take for granted because that's just our human way, right? And that's why we talk about magic and that's why we've had to share how you can create magic and this is why we keep moving forward and moving forward. It's not, doesn't end with magic. You still have your fate. You still have your purpose. And now we talk about bliss today and the importance of bliss in that whole equation, right? In karma, magic, bliss. Mm. Because we are here for our growth and evolution. We can't continue to settle. And as things begin to normalize, we have to push forward. Yeah. Right? Otherwise, we're failing in our own mission to grow and evolve. Okay. You know, I mean, if you think about it, as you kind of said, my life looks the same, but it just feels different. Yeah. And at some point, that feeling creates a new reality or a new experience of said reality. No, that makes sense. You know, like we were talking in the last episode about like the the very weird example of just going out on a night out, right? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Really, like we really milked that experience for a while. (laughs) Well, you served it up and I just ran with it. But it was perfect, right? (laughs) In many ways, because the thing is about this space, when you talk about freedom, it makes sense. Like, we'll say yes to things we wouldn't normally say yes to because we know that we can carry ourselves through it, Yeah. right? So maybe it's that crazy fun night out. Maybe it's saying yes to a new experience that we'd otherwise be scared of. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is just being able to open our minds to more than what we know, whether it's the nuclear family or nuclear relationship or typical job or Mm -hmm. we know that we can create something that suits us or at least we can give it a good shot yeah so it allows you to do stuff you just would never do before and therefore some of those things are going to work and therefore you're going to experience things you'd never experienced before and those experiences they they sort of they they have a cumulative effect right and that's what helps us build up that courage Mm. and that's where change can come in the more courage we have and you used to say that a lot which was I, that's how I learned to follow my emotions. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because the more I followed my heart and it worked out, the more I had faith in doing it, then eventually got to a place where I was like, however I follow my heart, it will work out. It just might not work out the way I thought it would. And so sometimes and that it's makes... hard. Sometimes it's hard to remember that, actually. It is. It really is. Because, again, that's, not, that's kind of what I was going to just about to say, which was, so in 5D or in this kind of higher consciousness place, I mean, sometimes I hate using the term 5D. I just, I'm so over it. I'm so over it. I can't, it just, it just sounds so like (sighs) golden gates. It's just like once you see you're good enough, basically. Yeah. And you're just making choices from a place of how you feel and allowing it to unfold and knowing that it doesn't have to be as it was and how everyone's living in a fucking simulation, which are ruled by rules. Mm -hmm. Like, it's all bullshit. Like, the rules are bullshit. 
Yeah. You don't have to follow them to know you're good enough. You're good enough to make your own ones. Yeah. There's such a lack of certainty as we're making these rules for ourselves, right? And we don't even call them rules. We just say that they're just sort of guiding principles and values, right? Yeah. And they always align within that sort of higher consciousness realm. They're not as we might think of sort of the arbitrary rules of 3D, right? Mm. That govern our behavior. It has more to do with, well, we can just be in flow. But it's hard to be in flow when the ground is always shifting underneath us. Well, it's hard to be in flow when everyone else around us also are kind of going through their shit. And the thing is, I'm... <laughs> That's fair. You know, and at the end of the day, like, if you're listening to this podcast and you're on episode, you know, 19 of season nine, which is huge, right? Yeah. Then you're probably in a space where you have managed to shed some of your shit. Mm -hmm. And you are starting to see the bullshit for what it is, which is bullshit, right? <laughs> but... You also know how it felt when you were trapped in it. Mm -hmm. And when you can see other people in it, you know how limited they are in their moments. And you can only have compassion for them. But it does affect you. Mm -hmm. I expected people to speak to me with the same honesty and heart that I spoke to them in. Mm. And I could not understand that that wasn't the case. Mm, that's fair. It couldn't that reconcile. Yeah. You know, like, so it is unexpected. Things are constantly shifting because you can't imagine what could be because you don't know it yet. Right? Yeah. And whether that's just a crazy night out or a different type of relationship or a different type of career or a different type of living situation or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But what was weird is that when I was in, in karma and outside of karma and what I did for ages, my solution was love, right? Throw a shit ton of love at it. Yeah. Whatever it was, <laughs> find the love and throw it at it. Yeah. And what I found to be really difficult is that I couldn't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, no, or at least not as well. Like, I'd be like, okay, so what would I normally do if a situation came up that bothered me? Or if someone and we were having an issue, what would I normally do? Find the love. Yeah. Find the love and chuck it like a fucking snowball machine. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like not stop throwing it. Because eventually that love is going to dissolve whatever issues I have with this person. And it'll also dissolve what issues they have with me, right? Like, you just throw love at it. Yeah. And it will just somehow... Find just direct place. all that light that you can at it, like you said, and maybe it'll just find its way through, right? Exactly. And that love was how we got out of our karma, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could be, yeah. that love was doing a lot. Oh, yeah. It was quite critical because yeah. it was really allowing space for our emotional bodies to kind of come front and center. And that kind of helped us access our spiritual bodies. And that's how we get to full body consciousness. So it was a really critical piece. Yeah, because effectively yeah. exercising love is what gets us out of our karma. I remember we wrote that. Yes, yes, yes. You're like, Liz, <laughs> I'm saying it flat out. Yes, yeah. fair. Exercising love. So it makes sense. But the longer we're in the space outside of kind of we're not good enough, the more just chucking love everywhere just doesn't seem to do much. I mean, partly because I was, became way too impatient. Mm, fair. And partly because like enough was enough. Mm. Enough of the shit. Yeah. Enough of the lack of respect. Mm. Enough of the settling. Enough of making excuses for poor behavior. Yeah. Enough, enough of, like, you know, we talk about wanting more and how wanting more is really important because what you call growth and evolution, I call wanting more, right? I want more love, more joy, yes. more experiences. And dealing with bullshit in any shape, way, or form, mm -hmm. enough is enough. Yeah. Like, I don't want to deal with it anymore. I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to feel icky. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be put in a position where I have to choose between what I feel and what I see. I just don't want it. Love then just doesn't seem to do the trick no. because the more I throw love, fine, I have an endless bounce of love. I'll send you all the love in the world, but that's not fucking changing anything no, apart no, from so. I'm carrying you mm -hmm. and I don't want to yeah. carry you. Nope. Because effectively I'm having to supply the love for both of us. Yeah. And, and that's just not good enough. And therefore I'm enabling all this poor behavior yeah. or whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. And the thing is, is that, and I just have to caveat this really clearly now. Okay. This is not old school rhetoric bullshit i need to say that and i need to say it really strongly because mm. in manifestation in letting go in all these stories it's like i'll show i'm good enough by you know standing up for myself and saying no and not treating my you know not allowing people to treat me a certain way and blah yeah. blah, blah oh blah, here's blah, my blah. boundary yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> like i know i'm not being good enough because i'm not saying no enough right okay. so i'm just going to scattergun my no and cut every tie with everything mm. only to then find the same person back in my face with you know like it may look different but they're behaving exactly the same way yeah so that's not what we're saying here because actually mm. in those situations and definitely in one's karma you have to follow your heart actually 
going down that rabbit hole of that relationship and coming out the other side might be exactly what you need to heal Mm. it. So putting that judgment on like what you think you one should do in order to stand up for oneself is bullshit. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about here, what I, what I'm really talking about here is when you naturally clearly inside of yourself know this is not okay and how you're feeling. It's the same thing Hmm. where it might look fine on the outside. It might mean nothing on the outside, but how you're feeling Mm -hmm. is different. It's still following the feeling. It's just instead of following the feeling from, I'm going to see where this leads and I still feel something. So let's see where it goes to actually, I don't want to feel this anymore. Hmm. Whatever ickiness you're throwing at me, Mm -hmm. it's not mine. Mm-hmm. right so yeah. it's about kind of I just want to make that quite clear because okay. I feel like a lot of people when they hear this especially when they're kind of wrapped up in like old school dating or old school job shit or like you know you kind of hear say no and whilst you're waiting for the perfect thing to come along you know or yeah. the more you say no the more you're rewarded with the yes or whatever yeah and that's not what I'm saying here at yeah. all I'm saying enough is enough if you th- believe you want better go for that better mm-hmm And that's it. Not because you're using an external to define the internal, but the other way around. Because something looks terrible to everyone else could be exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. Great. Something that looks amazing to everyone else might be exactly what you don't want. Mm -hmm. And only you can be the barometer of that. So when love is not enough, we have a perfect substitute. Okay, I'm looking forward to hearing this. It's called bliss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's okay, fine. So it's, it's, so what I remember from bliss is that bliss was above peace somehow, like how joy was a precursor to love, peace was a precursor to bliss. Yeah, but we don't even have to go there today. Okay. Yeah, that didn't even enter into this vocabulary at all it's just not necessary it's a nice way to think of it it does not necessarily i mean we're not canceling that out we're not negating that we're not even saying that was incorrect but we just understand it differently now because we're many many episodes okay. and chapters later okay fine so what do you, what is so bliss? Mm, bliss and love are the same thing they're not the same thing but they are a similar energy so one does not supersede the other okay so Love is key to many things, Always. and somehow bliss bliss will not cancel that out or change that. Okay, it doesn't supersede it in any way. It's not like we go from love to bliss, or we try. No, to, okay, no. But for some, like you were sort of saying, when love isn't enough, there is something else we can apply to ourselves, something else that matters that can matter to us, and that is bliss. Okay, I guess bliss is more experience focused, where love is more person focused. Maybe no. Okay. No, nope. we can't even make that distinction. Okay. Yeah. It just has a slightly different feeling, but it's similar highness. Precisely. Okay. Precisely. Yeah, just a different feeling. Okay. Yeah, but it can also just be a bit more effective when applied because we, unless we're born sometime after 2030, I think our understanding of love and how we apply it is still going to be, we're always going to kind of, especially for our generation, kind of shuffle back and forth from like old school, new school, right? Yeah. Because of our wiring. Yeah. So because of that, love occasionally gets conflated. It sometimes gets diminished. With bliss, it kind of will always sort of be up there. Okay. Yeah, vibrationally. Okay. In our understanding. So okay. it's just a bit easier. So what is bliss then? So bliss is the end result of our higher consciousness. What that means is that when we are capable of full detachment, as we discussed in some previous episode this season... And we can live within the largest bounds of our divine awareness. <laughs> Sorry for this blah, blah. Your eyes just went wide. You're like, how am I going to unpack this, Liz? <laughs> okay. So you're capable of full detachment. You are capable of living within the largest bounds of your divine awareness. So you can come out the other side greeting each day with a sense of like wonder and amazement and a sense of awe. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I don't even know what to say. So I know. <laughs> so you're in higher consciousness. Maybe don't say anything at all. Yeah. And we just end the episode right there. Can we? Because I don't. I don't even know what to say. So you're in higher consciousness, <laughs> which effectively you're operating from all four bodies at once, yeah. or higher consciousness plus, or whatever you want to call yeah. it. 
And then you're also detached enough to know that whatever happens will always be for your ultimate joy and you're going to always be joyful. But you're like, whatever's about all of you people. Exactly. Um, where, out, where I think we discussed that with detachment, like outcomes and experience, like yeah, the outcome and You and act result regardless of, of the so outcome whatever. Of, or expectation. Yeah. Exactly. And then the largest bounds of divine awareness, I guess, is just that you know this is just a game. Right. Yeah, yeah, but that within that game, you are not just the central character; you are the divine. Yeah. yeah. So you can literally write a new game. It's literally like when you're in, like, in your head, when you're like, I don't know, doing a fancy in your head. I was like, oh no, that doesn't work that way. Okay, we'll rewrite it so it goes that way. For mm-hmm. example, it's a bit like that. Yeah. So basically, like you wake up every morning, you're like, what am I going to do today? You can so see how you can see how a lot of the moving parts fit without having to be in it. It feels look look. It feels that sounds great. Yeah. But I can't imagine it. It's going to seem more possible a year from now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And part of that has a lot to do with just the more we are living from our fate, the more possible it becomes. So is being in bliss written in our fate? Yes, it is. At certain times? No, it's not a, it's not a point. It's not as if you just get to this juncture in your fate and you're like, oh, bliss arrived. You create it. It is something that you create made possible by your fate and when i was asking because you remember how we talked about the whole tapestry of fate and you get to a certain point and you co-create it and you write it as you go along because there's this unwritten bit bliss comes before the unwritten well i guess that makes sense because you have to be in bliss to write the unwritten exactly okay exactly but you create the fate the sorry you create well you create your fate but you also create the bliss okay yeah your your fate just allows for the possibility of it Okay. So in some ways, it's like you got to go find it, which again, seems a little unattainable at this point. But it is possible when we can understand that our human capacity to transcend all suffering is definitely possible. Really? Yeah, it really is. Honestly, when I look at this and when I receive this information, what I really grasp is that we are capable of living with complete detachment. Detachment to me seems like the linchpin to all of this. Can't suffer if you're attached to anything. Well, it's not just that. It's not just, oh, attachment breeds all suffering, right? Which is the very Buddhist sort of philosophy. But it's the fact that you can understand your role in all of this. So if I really am the one creating my suffering, not only do I not have to create it anymore, I can see it for what it is, which is a part of my growth and evolution. Okay. Yeah. So in 5D, they're still suffering. In bliss, they're still suffering. No, 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 no. I mean, you're just going to, you're, you're going to have eradicated it. Okay. Yeah, from your life. Again, how are you going to wake up with a sense of awe and wonder yeah. and, and profound purpose if you're going to wake up and be like, oh my God, my life sucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they do not go hand in hand. But it's also just seeing where suffering lies, right? And so suffering is just separation. Exactly. Exactly. It really doesn't have a lot to do with attachment. Like, you know, the the Buddhist philosophy has a lot to do with attachment to outcomes and experiences and results, right? It's very like everything should be a certain way. That's that's your shoulds. Yeah. Or I have to haves, right? But in this case, when we're talking about suffering, we're really are saying, well, it's all separation. So if I'm creating my own separation, I'm creating my own suffering. Okay. So if I'm telling myself to not be this way or that way, I'm telling myself to not be. I'm telling myself I cannot exist this way. Yeah. And therefore I am adding to my own suffering. So to be able to really transcend our suffering, we have to be able to live in now moment. And we have to know that we're living as the divine in body. All right. And so those we are two have big have... things. They're not just small things. Well. <laughs> no, I just was hoping to slide that one in. <laughs> Now moment is really not giving, it's all the time stuff we were doing the last episode, yeah, which is like that. being able to just really, the past is dead, the future, who the fuck knows, I can only be in the now and the now is great. Exactly. And the future is written and unwritten at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I can still say how it goes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then knowing that you're living as a divine and body is that divinity piece that we were discussing, right? It's the divine consciousness piece. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but to really grasp that is such a huge concept. And so, again, just just to remind everyone else, not me, obviously I still remember, (laughs) divine consciousness is... Knowing that we are the divine in body. Okay. But really grasping it with every fiber of our being and and body. And how do you know that you've done that? I think for me personally, I just can't doubt it. I don't question it. If we question it, then we don't get it. Okay. It's just a deep and profound... 
it's not even a knowing, it's just a fact. And it just takes a profound connection to your divine self. Like, in So is it divine. attainable for everyone? No. I mean, there are going to be people who are here for their separation experience, and that's all they came for. So no, we can't say everyone, but everyone has the capacity because everyone is a divine being. Okay. The reason why we go karma magic bliss is that magic ties in because when we experience and create magic, we get to get glimpses of bliss. Now, you don't have to be able to practice magic to get to bliss, but magic gives us this idea that bliss is possible. So magic is the bridge between karma and bliss. But you knew because you figured that one out. (laughs) That's the only bit I already knew, but that's only because I had the letters, right? I just knew that we kept saying KMB. And I thought, if you say it so much and it feels so natural, there's a reason. Mm -hmm. And then we figured out, obviously, the K was karma. And then M being magic came later. But then bliss we couldn't find for months, even though we'd spoken about bliss. And I was like, what is this B? What is this B? And I was trying everything. And then one day I was sitting in the car and I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) We've literally said bliss so many times. Of course, it's bliss. It's karma, magic, bliss. And then uh, from there, what was weird is that the rest unfolded, that we could see the work. We knew that once, because we were still finishing karma. But we knew at that point that we would then go into magic which would then lead us to bliss. Mm-hmm. And now we're just doing what we saw, yes. which I guess is the fate part. Exactly. I don't really see the magic bit, but I can see the fate part. It, magic is our experience of something. It's not It's not the thing we see, remember? It's like, yeah, yeah granted, seeing is believing, but sometimes it isn't. It just appears. And you yeah. think, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so bliss is a given for any divine being, right, who's in body. It's, magic is not necessarily the given. Okay, yeah. But magic can get you there. Yeah. Even though magic will magic always get you there, even though you might not Mm-mm. be aware of it. No. Because again, not everyone is here for magic. Okay, not everyone fine. necessarily is capable or needs it. Magic is just awesome. Okay. And you can have, like anything else, moments of bliss that effectively then become more consistent until that's all you got. Or is it just no, a No, it's not going to be like our scale of happiness. It's not like yeah. the happiness scale that we discussed where you just get more and more. Bliss is just one day it's just there and it's cemented oh wow yeah and do we know what day that will be no (laughs) so why are we doing this then if it's if it's so far ahead and it's you know people will be coming into this much later Mm -hmm. because you've got to be in in higher consciousness in the now moment knowing that you're divine in body all the things, right? Yeah. Why are we talking? Why are we introducing this today? It's the hallmark of five D and living in higher consciousness plus. Like you could just get to higher consciousness and skate. As we even said, if you get to full body consciousness, you're great, mm. right? Like if we can just get the majority of people into full body consciousness, yeah. the world would be a better place. If you get to higher consciousness, all the better, right? Especially for future generations. That's where you're looking for yeah. the scale and higher consciousness. You get to higher consciousness plus holy Jesus, right? Like you get pretty damn far. That speaks a lot to where you are in your evolution and it speaks a lot to where you are in your fate and how much of your fate you're realizing. So those are incredible markers. Yeah, they're not goalposts. They're just markers of your evolution. The ultimate goal we're we're looking at right now, and I think this is just why this has to come out before 2024, and we'll discuss that in in upcoming episodes this season, is that nothing is going to look the same as it did years or months before. Okay. So at this point, we've made the choice? Is no, no, no. We haven't made that choice. Okay. On an individual level, if you have, then that's then okay. that's where we're going. So, so basically, the ultimate goal is to achieve a life where absolutely nothing looks the same as it did. Yeah. Okay, so it's not just about feeling differently. No. As we were saying at the beginning of 5D, where it feels different but looks the same. Right. The goal is to change what it looks like. Exactly. But change it from the inside out rather than the outside in. Exactly. Okay, fine. Yeah, because you can change all the throw pillows and your address and your life can still just be the same. You just rebuilt it with a different postcode. Okay, fine. Right. Fine. So what's going to get us there? And since 2019, 2020, we've been in an active state of shedding. Okay. Right? Yeah. Shedding ego, shedding fear, shedding karma, hopefully, all of that. And right? then shedding all the shit that we still think we need in the ways in which we still think we need them. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and yeah. all that shedding allows us to change our wiring. 
Okay. But shifting out of the hardwiring that we have had in place in order to protect ourselves or ensure our survival or so since 2019, effectively, right? Yeah. The, the actual shedding. And yes, we talked about how in 2016, you know, we were shifting and you know introduced to whatever. And then 2012 was really just the start. I mean, you, we can look at all these dates and say, okay, well, the process has, the process began this time, you know, we got shaken up by this time and then this allowed for whatever. The, I mean, effectively we've had this 2020 to 2024 timeline of like this is where we get to see and build the foundations of 5d higher consciousness what have you so we can change the world that 2024 got kicked to 2026 but what's interesting is that i'm still getting 2024 for certain things so i'm like well have we changed it again like is have things kind of sped up again and the answer is no but we still have to work within the original time frame, if that makes sense, where 2024 is still going to kick off some bullshit. We might have a bit more leeway in terms of the personal time, but I don't see that. I don't see the Wait, leeway. wait, 24 is going to have more bullshit. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're meant to like this whole... Okay, what I was beginning to understand about this 2020 to 2024 time frame in the... 5D foundational building crap that, you know, we, you know, was the whole message around this time was, okay, well, this was the state of shedding, right? This is a state of shifting. It's a state of shifting consciousness in order to enable a building of 5D, which remember means the simultaneous destruction of 3D. So all the parts of 3D we have not been able to shift out of, which is most of it. A decent amount, right? Because you're not just looking at the external structures of 3D in which we exist. It's all the internal stuff as well. It's all the internal stuff, which was, which was something we were beginning to see mid-end 2022. So 2023 was really about, can we bear it? All of that is revealed. Can we bear it? Well, we can only bear it if we'd already begun our, our shifting, right? Our own internal changes. So that by 2024, when we're invited to live in a new way, do we have the scale to enable that as everything else outside of us in terms of the 5D framework yet to be built, the 3D framework coming down, can we weather, right? Now, where 2026 fits in with that time frame is the collective has more time to come together with that. Okay. So we've had the individual shedding and the individual shifting to bring us to 2024 but the collective as we saw wasn't capable of bearing the burden together yeah right because everybody just turned on each other instead that was the prevailing theme of 2020 and 2021 which was there's no real collective we don't have consciousness scale we could get to 2026 and see how it goes okay that's what that looked like fine so 2024 stuff will still happen oh yeah Oh yeah, it's written. <laughs> Yay. So what kind of stuff will happen since we're close to it now? We'll talk about that in another episode. It's not for okay. this one. This okay. one is about bliss. Okay. Let's fine. focus on bliss. <laughs> okay. So basically get to bliss and then nothing around you will bother you so much. <laughs> exactly. Because okay. your suffering doesn't it's not suffering for you. And otherwise you can just supplement with love. Thank you for listening. For more information, articles, and inspiration, find us at karmasmybitch.com and at karmasmybitch.insta. And if you liked what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a review.